To tak jak zapowiedziałam, pojawi się teraz na scenie człowiek, który o inwestowaniu wie wszystko. Założyciel i prezes Glob Forum, organizacji, która skupia innowatorów, inwestorów, międzynarodowe korporacje i przedsiębiorców z całej Europy. W swojej karierze współpracował między innymi z twórcami pionierskiej firmy Skype, fundator nagrody Glob Award. Johan Gorecki. Well, you never say no to a kiss, that's for sure. Well, a lot of uh, spotlights. I can't barely see the, the audience, but I know that you're out there somewhere. Um, a question. I know there are around 3,000 people out there today. And uh, my first question is, who wants to be a billionaire? Raise your hands. Now I can't see any hands because of these spotlights, but I hope there are, or I guess, there are some uh, hands up in the air. Who wants to um, develop a successful company? To be an entrepreneur, raise your hands. Well, I would say to you that raise your hand on the question, who wants to be a millionaire? You will not be successful, I'm sorry. That is a question I receive quite often, like, how will I, will I be a billionaire? And if you start in that direction, you definitely start in the wrong direction. I need to put it back here. The problem is with people, people that think too much about material things and money. I mean, of course, money is extremely important to, I mean, succeed with your idea. But a good question to answer or ask yourself, did Picasso want to be a billionaire? I don't think so. He was extremely passionate about painting. And I don't see any differences between uh, artists like Picasso, a successful entrepreneur, and an athlete. You need to work extremely hard And the only way to be able to work extremely hard is actually to be passionate about what you're doing. Personally, I believe that uh, being an entrepreneur, starting your own company is for sure a lifestyle. And you need to think very carefully if you're really that person. It's nothing wrong not being that type of person. You might uh, want to feel the security of being employed, because being an entrepreneur is everything else from security. I've been engaged in a lot of different things. It's, uh, it's quite often that you just talk about, or in most cases, you talk about uh, your successes. I receive uh, questions about, of course, Skype, and uh, that you, need, you, you are probably extremely intelligent. Uh, that, that was part of that travel. Uh, Globe Forum, which is a marketplace uh, for entrepreneurship and uh, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. And of course, that's very interesting, but uh, will, it, uh, will it work? But I'm, I'm a normal person, started in a very normal family. My first job was in a hotel, working night shifts, uh, polishing shoes. Every night I polished, I think it was around 300 shoes at the Sheraton Hotel in Stockholm. I think that was extremely inspiring because I told myself, of course, this is not a fun work, but one day I will succeed doing something. I knew already there that I will do something. I, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that's something I will do. And uh, when someone asked me in the future, how did everything start? I will go back to the time when I was sitting in the middle of night polishing shoes. I don't believe in, in shortcuts. I think that you need to learn. And something you learn from polishing shoes is actually that it's hard work. You meet people, you meet people complaining about my polishing of shoes. 
I think it's a life travel of learning how people behave and behavior and behavior shifts. My dream was actually at a later stage to uh, become a chef and run a restaurant. And I was extremely happy when I got a job uh, to serve food in one of the leading restaurants in Stockholm. After uh, two days, they, uh, they called me for a meeting with all the other servants in, in the restaurants, saying that, uh, unfortunately, we don't think that you have a future in this business. You can't serve. You are not uh, the right type of people for, for a person for, for this kind of job. And, uh, well, that's something you need to ac uh, accept. Sometimes you don't really know what you're supposed to do, but you need to try and elaborate. I tried hotels, I tried uh, restaurants. Then I started to uh, elaborate more with my entrepreneurial side. My first company was actually a ticket company. It, uh, it is a big golf tournament in, in, in Stockholm called Scandinavian Masters. Uh, and it's one of the top, uh, I would guess, top 10 tournaments in, in, in Europe. And we figured out that 80% uh, of tickets to this tournament are actually sponsored tickets. So uh, we walked around asking people if they have some extra tickets. And a lot of uh, people with sponsoring tickets gave us tickets. And then we ran down the street and sold the tickets to the people that had to buy tickets. So uh, every summer we did around, uh, I think we did around, uh, uh, around probably six, 7,000 euros every summer. And, and at that age, that was a lot of money. My first real failure as an entrepreneur was when we started Scandinavian Racing Tour, which was a travel agency for people that wants to travel around and watch uh, Formula One. And we thought it was a great idea to save money to actually buy a bus instead of renting a bus. So uh, with uh, around 80 crazy lunatics that loved uh, Formula One, we were down on the way from uh, Stockholm to Nürnberg in Germany. And in Denmark, the bus broke down. And we had to stay and we missed the Formula One tournament in Nürnberg. So we had to uh, pay back all the money to these travelers. And you can imagine how happy they were standing on the, on the highway in Denmark and realized that they will miss the, the tournament. But that's uh, some things that happens. For me, it is important to trust your gut feeling. Uh, my first job was at a bank in London. Uh, well, real job after my studies. And uh, people in this bank thought that my uh, surname, Goretzky, I think here in this audience, so you probably know that that is not a Russian surname. But obviously, uh, people interviewing me thought it was Russian surname. So they um, asked me if I wanted to work with syndicated loans uh, in Russia. And uh, of course, I said that, well, that's exactly what I've been dreaming of doing. And said, yes. But I, of course, told them that my surname is not Russian, it's, it's Polish. And they said, it doesn't matter as long as it sounds Russian to them. I realized that banking was nothing for me, so I started, so I changed a couple of years later uh, and uh, started to work for a media company in, uh, in Sweden called Modern Times Group. Um, I was part of a quite interesting journey with a newspaper called Metro. It was uh, the first uh, free morning newspaper only based on advertisements. And today that might not sound like a big revolution or a, a big entrepreneurial thing, but at that time it was a huge breakthrough. Only one year before that, um, the same company launched the first com commercial TV station in Sweden, and this is around 96, 97. I also realized uh, when, when I started to think about that, that when I stopped high school, 93, 94. Internet didn't exist, more or less. Uh, and I didn't, or nobody was using mobile phones. So if you look from there up until today, quite a lot of things have happened. At Modern Times Group, I met Niklas Sönström. He had his journey with Kassar, 
uh, where he tried to improve what Napster was doing, uh, downloading uh, music and entertainment. Uh, that was a big challenge for him, so he sold it to, I think, an Australian company and came up with the idea Skype, or at that point called Skyper, and asked me if I wanted to work with him. That was an extremely interesting travel. But as everything, uh, all travels are uh, also based on uh, a lot of strange things. Uh, one of the most strange things was when I was jailed in, in, in China. And uh, for a young kid, that is quite hard to kind of, when you are supposed to make one phone call and you call home to your parents saying that, hi mom, I'm in jail in China, that's it. So uh, she was probably <laughs> quite worried after that uh, phone call. Entrepreneurship takes a lot of time. Again, I go back to what I said in the beginning, that entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. And uh, probably the hardest thing for me was combining my family with entrepreneurship. Because when you're extremely passionate about something, you forget everything else. I'm extremely glad that my wife is still married to me. And that's also a recommendation to uh, you out there that wants to be entrepreneurs. Take care of your families. And it's no idea to work 24 hours per day. It's better to actually uh, decide and set a structure how you work and how much time you spend on things because things doesn't get better because you sit up all days, traveling all the time and are away. I think it's actually quite healthy to actually take time off, spend time with your family. Today I have uh, three small children, three, six and eight, I believe. Sometimes I, they have birthdays and they, they, the ages change, and uh, sometimes I don't really follow. And that's the kind of things that your other part, your better part, notice, and that's not good. Family is important, and you get a lot of inspiration. Most of my things I think about, actually, I talk with my children. So some people have uh, very senior people as uh, mentors. I would say that my mid-child, who is uh, six, He's definitely my mentor. I talk a lot with him, especially when it comes to uh, question about my relationship with my wife. Do you think this is good and bad? Should I buy flowers? Uh, not flowers, that's not good. Food, what do you think about food? Sh shall we cook food tonight? Children are wonderful and are very direct and very honest, so you get direct answers. We also live in a, that's also a big change from 15, 20 years back to today, when you have enormous access to data and people. We definitely live in a network society. And I think that one of the cornerstones when you want to build a company is being or have a big network and know a lot of people. Because again, a lot of strange things will happen and you will face a lot of questions that you can't solve, then it's great to have a lot of friends and a big network with people that you can uh, talk to. I don't really believe in secrets. People sit and they hide their ideas and they don't want to talk about their business plans and uh, what they're planning to do. It's not really about the business plan, your idea. The success is definitely the person or the people behind the company. So I definitely believe, and it's a strong recommendation, that the more transparent you are, the more you improve your uh, uh, possibilities to actually succeed. Talk freely about what you want to do, what you are planning, because it's really hard for other people to copy what you do. It is you that will be the difference between failure and success. I've been talking about crowdfunding for a long time. 
And some of the investors that we worked with in the beginning said that you can't talk, don't mention the name crowdfunding because then someone else on, on the planet will copy this and do it. And I said that, well, it's a very tricky thing. I mean, it's, it's legal regulations. Uh, you can't really be an advisor on, 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 on investments. Uh, how shall we solve these kind of things? So I don't think that in that case, we wouldn't be able to come forward and develop things if you don't talk to people and collaborate. So I think that uh, people saying that you need to be extremely competitive don't care about the comp competitors. See them as your friends and try to work together. Again, the difference will be you. I just want to, um, I see a lot of things and I read a lot of plans and I go to many conferences. So I just want to give my picture of the trends uh, in the market. It's a big change due to internet, what I call not innovative change. It's a behavior shift in market. One half of me today works with, uh, with investments, with the Meta Group. The other half works with, uh, with, uh, with a board mission in, in a media group. And uh, it's a big challenge for media where things are changing extremely fast, where print becomes digital and you don't realize it and you don't really know how to make money on the internet. When you receive reports that uh, TV viewers on linear TV are dropping heavily and people are starting to uh, use platforms like Netflix and HBO, like uh, films on demand, that's big changes. It's tough for the big companies, but I think that this kind of behavior shifts creates a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs. And who could say for 10 years back that I would start a TV station? That would probably be a thing that, I mean, you couldn't imagine of doing. But today it's possible. People from, from uh, universities can directly go out and create platforms and start uh, TV programs and TV stations. And actually, if they are successful, be relevant competitors to the big uh, TV stations. If I should be a little bit more emotional, I think that we need and can also seize opportunities in the field of uh, sustainable development. I actually uh, wrote a book called Sustainability, which is about the big uh, challenges and what kind of opportunities it creates for entrepreneurs. We are nine billion people on Earth today. I don't know if all these figures are right, but they're probably more or less right. It comes from scientists. We are nine billion people today, and uh, people believe that we will double that size in 40 years. People are moving from poverty, which is good, to working. People in low class work their, their way up to middle class. And this is definitely, you see these big shifts in, in the big tiger economies like China, India, Bangladesh. You see the phenomenon like mega cities. And it's an enormous challenge when it comes to energy, food, health, water, transportation, and the way we live. So I think this is a great opportunity for entrepreneurs. And talking about these big challenges, the first thing that happens is that politicians start to organize these huge meetings about taking responsibility. Of course, nothing happens. Next step is that uh, big corporations are quite pushed to do something. So they start to organize big meetings and talk about how things should be done. Then they realize that we can't do it either. Who will then do it? Well, that's for sure 
be the entrepreneurs. Because to be able to cope with this, we need new solutions, new techniques, new mindsets. And I know this is uh, statistics from Sweden, but um, if you look at young people that are uh, starting to work, 65% of them wants to be entrepreneurs and self-employed. And they want to be some kind engaged in sustainable development. So I think that younger generation today realize this. And I think that I'm not that worried about, about the future because I see this kind of uh, underdog perspective with entrepreneurs and innovators. They are there, they are working hard, they are coming up with great innovations and solutions. But you need to find a harmony between industry, the public sector and the entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs are small, industry is big. I think the challenge, the challenge is how they actually talk to each other and work with, with each other. I presume that this is about entrepreneurship and also how to uh, raise money. So I'm going to the next part, talking about money. Of course you need money uh, to be able to devel develop your company. And the uh, question is, will you um, be able to uh, grow organically? With other words, that you start something, you sell something, you can build and develop your company on your own sales. Sometimes, and I would say the true entrepreneurs, they succeed doing that. Some other business are not done or you can't really start it with, with empty pockets. You have different kinds of money. I know that it's a, a different kind of target groups here today, everything from students to entrepreneurs, I don't know, maybe investors. Um, but I think that the low-hanging fruits in terms of uh, finding money would be public money. So that's always a good start. Friends and family, you should turn to your near and dear and see if they can get engaged and help you. Banks, if possible, it's better to borrow money than find investors. Because when you're small, your value of your company is more or less nothing. Even if you believe that it's a big value, I assure you that the investors will inform you that they evaluate your company differently. So the longer you can stay with your own money and grow the company and create real values, the better it is. Sooner or later, I definitely think that you need to uh, start to look for investors. I strongly believe in, in the angel community with business angel, people, individuals that probably succeeded or family offices, families that have money or had money or they have money in generations. They are good investors because you should look at the combination of the money and the competence and experience. So I think it's quite important or very important to show or to find investors that also understand and have a passion for what you're doing. And if they have a competence and can help you as a mentor, open up doors, share the network, I think that's very important. And all the time, the longer you can stay with as little money or borrowed or invested money as possible, the more values you grow. Next step would probably be that you need to find more organized investors, like seed investors, uh, venture capital firms. But they will be extremely tough. When you grow, probably expansion money, then when you turn to the private equity firms and in industrial investors. I think that in the, the earlier you can engage industrial investors, the better it is. And what does it take to, um, to get investors on board? Again, you need to have a good business plan. And it's a lot about you. You need to be trustworthy. No one else will be able to make this plan or company 
make through and grow if you are not the right person. So a, a, a very important advice, don't over-exaggerate figures and your plans. It's nothing wrong saying that you will only go national in one country or one city. Not all companies are, are made to be global big companies. And don't over-exaggerate your valuations and the figures and gross figures about your company. Be very honest, very hum uh, humble. If the investors believe that there are potentials bigger than what you think, that is probably the best case. You also need to show that what you have is very unique. What, what is unique with what you are doing? Are you solving a problem? Do you make life easier for people? That's the thing you need to ask yourself when you are thinking about starting a company around a idea. So, now the screen here says zero, 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 zero. I don't think they talk about money, it's my time. My time is out, and I hope that my life story, my view of entrepreneurship, my view of uh, raising money, have given you something. If you want to meet me, you can always email me. Today I work with Meta Group, and we're trying to make a new platform for, uh, for uh, SME stage investor, uh, investments. So we're working with different funds around Europe uh, to make this happen. So um, please feel free to come up to me uh, with your idea if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'm quite sure that if you have a good idea, we will definitely find you out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johan. So what will be the next business you're going to invest in? Uh, next idea? Yeah, next idea. Yeah, next startup. Uh, well, uh, I, well uh, my colleagues uh, know it. And, um, you don't want to say it? Sorry? You don't want to say it? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I told you early on, I believe in transparency and uh, no secrets. <laughs> so I believe in crowdfunding. Uh, we have been working with it for a long time. We have been mo monitoring the market for probably uh, six, seven years. Uh, we have some really good ideas about how we can actually make crowdfunding work. So, uh, and, and for you that are not familiar with crowdfunding, it's that you actually gather a lot of small individuals that have an interest of, uh, of investing in, in what you're doing. Uh, so uh, we are looking at the marketplace for finance because it's a huge problem to raise money in the SME sector. So that's something we try to solve and build with, with Meta Group and Seneca Meta Ventures. And I think that crowdfunding is something extremely interesting. So we that's will talk what about I will... crowdfunding later today as well. Thank you so Definitely. much. Johan Thank you. Goretzky. No kiss goodbye? Of course. <laughs> and hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Szanowni Państwo, skąd biorą się pieniądze?